Hello, my fellow earth signs. Welcome to fourth quarter 2022 intuitive energy forecast. My name's Lisa Lyle. This is my channel here on YouTube. If you are new, welcome. Take a moment now to hit that subscribe button. If you have been with me for a while, thank you for continuing to come back. And please do check that you are still subscribed to this channel. YouTube has been doing some wonky things and subscriptions are disappearing um, without us even knowing that it's happening. So I'm really excited to be back sharing in this way. Um, if, you've, if you're a subscriber of this channel, you'll notice that um, there's been an uptick in activity. And that is because I finally got my first, second, and third book almost published. First and second are published. Third is on the way any day now. And that is really what has been keeping me busy for most of 2022. And now that we've moved into October and that is behind me, I'm very excited and um, incredibly passionate about sharing uh, again with all of you in a myriad of wonderful ways. So I have been guided to bring these um, intuitive forecasts by the sun sign back and I haven't done them in about a year. So this is quite exciting to me and I'm going to be starting with the earth signs and just tuning in to what is in store for us for the, the remainder of 2022. Um, so October, November and into and through December. So we're going to start with Capricorn. Actually, I'm being guided to start uh, with an over, um, with a sort of Oversoul message for the earth signs as a collective and for that they're asking me to draw um, a tree angel oracle card and then what I'll do at the end of this video is I will read the guidebook message for this um, card. So this is sort of the overriding theme or healing theme for all of us earth signs before we get into the individual signs. I'm going to just ask that they're really clear, that the it's clear which card that they want. So I hope you're doing well. I hope 2022 has been good to you. Okay. So for us earth signs, it feels like this is a passageway. The, the third, fourth quarter of this year, there's an opportunity for us to, I'm hearing like advance on our spiritual um, path and the number on this card is 25 and it's really speaking about our physical body so really using allowing our body to be the guide to lead us forward at this time it feels that as we move forward this uh, this gateway this path first I'm being guided to say we are safe guided and protected each and every step of the way so don't hesitate if fear is holding you back fear is on the opposite spectrum of love so if you're being held back um, by fear, it, it's time to shift gears and shift into that loving heart space. Fear is motivated in the mind and that um, over or under active solar plexus chakra. And, and this card really feels like there is um, a shift taking place in the solar plexus chakra. And we would be wise to focus on our our physical vessel and how we're feeling what is the quality of our breath are we getting the breath deep into our belly or are we just shallow breathing which is really keeping us in this fight or flight um the sympathetic nervous system for some it feels like there's a call at this time to really get outside and ground yourself and and for others it feels like there is um it, there's a divine masculine energy coming into your life or perhaps it, that this divine masculine is currently in your life. And I feel like uh, there's much wisdom offered to you through this connection with the divine masculine. Uh, this is a very stable energy, very stable, very sure of themselves, very, um, I want to say supportive and protective as the divine masculine is. Um, so have a look at this card and see if there's any messages intuitively that are coming in for you. It does feel like there is a whole bunch of spiritual support coming in 
And this is why some of us may be feeling ungrounded during this um, fourth quarter of 2022. And what I'm being guided to say is there will be forces outside of yourself that seek to unground you. Don't, la don't allow that to happen. Stay in your heart space. Stay um, with your feet firmly planted on the ground and trust that this gateway, this pathway that you are moving through is really, um, again, it's like a leveling up, a spiritual leveling up, and you deserve this. Let's, I'm going to reach into my little handy bag here and draw a crystal for all the earth signs. A crystal for the earth signs for the, ah, uh, we've got the Gaia stone, which is, it's green obsidian. Obsidian, yes. It's green obsidian and it is called the Gaia stone. So it's funny that the earth signs would get the Gaia stone. And um, if you don't know, obsidian is made from volcanic, um, uh, it's a volcanic rock. And so this feels really beautiful. It's 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 gorgeous to hold. Uh, and what I'm what I'm feeling when I connect with this is that there is um there is some healing taking place this final quarter of the year. So 2022 for many people has been kind of uh it has been a deeply healing year and it feels like at this time we're being called out of isolation, if you will, out of um, perhaps out of our comfort zone. And, and this is really speaking to me of like the heart energy at this time. So really caring for your heart as you're being led forward, as you're being led forward on your path, as you're being led forward on this path that is really leading to more stability um, and, and to a more expanded experience of being divinely human, working with um, Gaia stone or green obsidian is going to be greatly beneficial to you. At, at one time, when I, when I initially got this stone many, many years ago, it was quite hard to come by. I'm not sure um, how easy it is to acquire these days. And if you can't find it or if you don't have it, working with any green stone will um, be supportive to your heart as you continue to more deeply heal. How beautiful. I love that. Okay. So um, I will share at the end of this message, if you just want to, um, you know, if you, after your sign, you want to just skip through to the end, go for it. But it does, this overriding theme really leads me to feel that all of the earth signs are going to have a similar message and there'll probably be something here for each and every one of you. So I'm just going to get this ready for us when I get into that, the horn beam. Okay, so we're going to start with Capricorn and I'm going to just pull a few cards here. We'll see. So message from Mother Earth for my Capricorns. Message for Mother Earth. For my Capricorns. I really would like clear messages. Come on, Capricorn. I'm, I'm hearing Capricorn is, um, it, it feels as if your back is up. I don't know what that means. Like your back is up, your guard is up and it would, uh, you're being advised to let your guard down a little bit. It, as was said in the collective messages, you are safe, guided and protected along your way. So it is okay to let your guard down a little bit. Don't hold yourself so closed. It feels like there's quite a bit of closed energy around you. And it's really time to open up as you move deeper into harmony. It's a number three. So what I'm feeling, Capricorn, is that perhaps up until this point in time, you've been feeling like something's not quite in alignment. Something's not quite um, at jiving, if you will. Uh, something's rather inharmonious in your experience. 
And during this final quarter of 2022, it's like more harmony is moving into your life. That card came easily. And this is from Archangel Michael. Ah, and it's a number three too. So you've got two threes here, Capricorn. This is about, you are coming into harmony. You are moving into a more um, balanced experience of your divinity through sacred practices. So perhaps you've been busy, like we're just moving into autumn now. So perhaps spring and summer has been a whirlwind. There's been a lot going on. Perhaps you've been out and about on the road a lot and, and really feeling kind of out of sorts. Like, where is my home? Well, your home is right here in your beautiful beating heart. And you're being called back to this place to bring yourself back into harmony. I love that it's 33 because we have a uh, Sananda here, which is um, some say it is like the evolved name of our brother, Jesus, the Christ. Um, and so 33 is often associated with Jesus as well. Um, they're saying that he was 33 years old when he, when he was um, sacrificed. Um, and so this feels like it, there's, you're being guided to remember that you are here walking a path of mastery. And throughout these months, you know, at the beginning, I was saying like for the collective of the earth signs, it's like a leveling up. Well, this is your leveling up and you're being called to get grounded, get back into your heart. Um, and you'll notice on both um, the imagery on both cards, the heart is lit up. I do feel for some of you, there is a call for forgiveness and perhaps it's like a forgiveness, a forgiving of yourself because you, you kind of got busy and, and you forgot about those things that really support you to feel um, well. As, as the um, cardinal earth sign, I always look up to Capricorns as like these highly creative. I always think the cardinal signs, I feel like the cardinal signs of all um, the signs are always like the, the uh, what do I want to say, the more evolved <laughs> or... Um, the more embodied of the signs, if you will. Look at this, the heart guardian. Uh, love and let yourself be loved. So it comes right back to that forgiveness energy where I was feeling like, you know, there's this, I, there's this energy around you that there is a need for forgiveness. So perhaps um, I'm really guided to this card and seeing like the, the guidance and support flowing in. Perhaps you have gotten so busy that you haven't been creating space or making space in your daily life for your spiritual practices. And so you're being called back to your spiritual practices and, and really like really dedicating, devoting time and, and energy into each day for you because your heart is the most beautiful aspect of who you are. And, and, and perhaps you have allowed create, perhaps you have like pushed your creative pursuits off to the side and haven't really been nurturing them. It feels like this quarter, um, a, a part of your healing is through your creative pursuits. So getting back into your heart space, getting back into doing the things that you love that really bring you these feelings of peace and harmony in the now moment. Getting to nature as well for you, Capricorn. It does feel like there is has been a disconnect from that um, that aspect of who you are, which is one with nature. Getting yourself back to nature, getting yourself grounded back into and through your heart is really going to open things up for you in a myriad of ways, and I believe support this leveling up, if you will. And the final card you've got is Holy Amethyst, Divine Alchemy. And it says on the card, move beyond current challenges and focus on what you desire, which is taking me right back to this heart guardian card, um, allowing yourself to be in your heart space moment to moment for yourself during these, like every single card that you've got here, Capricorn, has the heart lit up. So this is a strong... Uh, message for all of you to get into your heart, allow yourself to be in that heart space. You are so worthy and deserving of the time that you invest in yourself. And, you know, the Capricorns in my life, they tend to be very giving. It's 211 as well. So 
as I'm recording this. So pay attention, if you will, to the signs that you're receiving. Um, and, and the universe, the loving universe, your higher self is speaking to you through numbers and symbols. So pay attention because, um, as I was saying, the Capricorns I know and love are very giving and very generous of their time um, to others. And as a result, sometimes their physical well-being, their emotional or spiritual well-being gets put, put on the back burner to their detriment. So this is a, this is a SOS call for you Capricorns this quarter to really take care of yourself. You above anyone else is worthy and deserving of your time and attention. So I hope that resonates with you, Capricorn. And uh, now we're going to move on to Taurus. I'm going to just put this number here, like 1550 for Taurus, just so I can timestamp the readings. Okay, so Taurus, our fixed earth sign. Taurus, what's going on for Taurus? In the final quarter of 2022. We've got some jumping cards here, Taurus. That, there, for me, the, right now, what I'm feeling, there we go, for you, is that there is a need for you to get out of your head. <laughs> get out of your head and into your heart and, and into your connection with the earth. This is the sacred earth mother, and it's a message of love. You know, Taurus, you have the reputation for being stubborn and uh, you know that's what I was kind of feeling as the card flipped out is that you've been in your head for a while and it's you're being asked this quarter to make that transition to make that shift into your heart because there is a leveling up that's here for all of us earth signs I'm a Virgo oh your this card fell out as well for you so we're going to take that um, a night on earth, magical new beginnings. And this is a number eight. So your higher self is really guiding the process for you this, this quarter, Taurus, to get out of your head and into your heart, allow yourself to be seen. And, and it does feel as if there is some, there is a need for some healing here, Taurus, below the heart. So the solar plexus, the sacral and the root chakra. And it's, you know, the time that you invest in yourself is really valuable and, and you're so worth that time. And it feels like it's an absolute necessity for you at this time to invest in yourself so that you can level up, so that you can ease up to the next um, station, if you will, of where you are called and meant to be in your spiritual experience. The number 42, it comes to a six. And what I'm feeling for you, this again, six is the house of Virgo, right? Health, family, home. Six is also the number of our spiritual path and purpose in this lifetime. So perhaps you've all been in, perhaps you've been in your head, Taurus, because you're like, what am I here to do? What am I supposed to do? I'm not really feeling it. You're overthinking it is what I've just heard. And so by your ability to allow yourself to get into your heart, like to get out to nature, um, it's the answers are going to easily come to you from within you. You've been overthinking it is what I'm hearing. You've been overthinking it and you've been neglecting, uh, you've been neglecting your heart. You've been neglecting time in nature. You've been neglecting just, um, the disconnect, if you will, um, because all of us earth signs really appreciate uh, our time with Mother Earth, our, our time in nature uh, with no interference from other humans or technology. And, you know, it's such a valuable component to being human, particularly at this at this stage of humans evolution or devolution, whatever you want to call it, because we're inundated by all of these external um, frequencies from our handheld devices to the technology, um, all this smart, smart technology that's all around us. The, the smartest technology is in the heart. We are the greatest and finest technology of all time. And it, it's really important for us to sort of rewind and come back online uh, through our heart space. So let's see what else is here for Taurus. 
um, and two cards came out and I'm really being guided to this um, sun here or it could be the moon. I'm feeling it as the sun getting out in the daytime. It says a night on earth <laughs> and I'm feeling it completely opposite. I'm feeling it as the daytime. Um, so perhaps there is a need to balance the polarities in your life. You got three cards. <laughs> you got three cards. How ridiculous. Um, but I am really feeling that it's important to you to get out um, into the sunshine when the sun is shining. I also feel like uh, the, to the total lunar eclipse as well as the partial solar eclipse. Um, so the partial solar is October 25th with the new moon in um, Scorpio. And then we have the total solar. It's going to be October, uh, November 7th. So these, this is a really important time um, for you. So pay attention to how you're feeling at these times because look at these cards. This is like phenomenal. You've got this shapeshifter card, the high priest card, and the elder. And so, you know, at the beginning I was talking about all of the earth signs are moving like a leveling up, if you will. And you're leveling up. It's clear that it's happening and you have the ability to really... I'm, I'm feeling like meld and, and, and blend with the environment, with the circumstances that are going on. And this is, in fact, a great power of yours. And it feels almost as if, Taurus, you've forgotten your power because you've been so up in your, your head. You've been, um, you know, so busy doing life, living life, um, that you have forgotten that you are an incredible, incredibly powerful being in your own life. It says trans. Form and unveil your gifts. And this is the leveling up. And I really feel for you, Taurus, that the time between now when you receive the message, um, if you're receiving it before October 25th, that the time between October 25th and November 7th, that whole moon cycle for you is incredibly important and incredibly powerful. If only you are willing to invest in yourself during that time. Because you are a high priest of light. This card is like the Hierophant in um, the Tarot. And so you are being called into your power. You are being called to step up and take a leading role in your life. Uh, and to see everybody and all things from a higher perspective. It says intend and create. So if you have felt flat and you felt like, you know, life's just not working out for you. Things just aren't going the way that you would like them to. It's really time for you to step back, step out into nature and um, allow, allow yourself to receive uh, messages because the message on this card is a message of love. So allow yourself to receive a message of love from Mother Earth, from your higher self or through Mother Earth, from your higher self, because you are an elder. You, you've been on this spiritual journey for quite some time. Uh, I was going to say whether consciously or unconscious, and yet it does feel like you are very conscious of your um, spiritual essence. And so it's really time to embody that. So many of us hold ourselves back because we don't want to be too much. And, you know, in fact, we were born to be too much. We are those too much people, right? That's why we're here. Uh, you know, people who achieve great things didn't sit on the sidelines keeping quiet um, like the wallflowers afraid. Enough of the wallflower time. It's time to come out and shine and allow the elder within you um, to come through. It says move beyond ancestral patterns. So this speaks of that collective healing of the heart that I was feeling with the Gaia stone. Um, you're the one who came here to break the patterns. You are the one who came to break free of generational curses. You are the one that came to do the healing because you can do it. You know you can do it. That's why you're here this time around, Taurus. So let's see which Keeper of Light has a message and is working with Taurus during this quarter. I'm really feeling the earth is calling to you, Taurus. Like the earth mother wants to nurture and support you. Allow yourself to be nurtured and support, supported. Oh, look at this powerful, look at this powerful being. You got Odin. 
psychic insight. And so it's speaking with, like in line with all these cards, right? The high priest, the shapeshifter, all of it. We've got Odin. And it says, your third eye is open. See truth for what it is and follow your intuition. So perhaps a part of the, the, the challenge for you, Taurus, is that you do see, you have been seeing things clearly. And so, um, you know, you've been up in the head and, and the what the missing link, if you will, is you. Um, but the missing component has been the grounding aspect, the connection to nature, which is why this card came out first for you. It's like time to get out of your head, into your heart, and then go deeper, get to the root. If, if things, if you're still um, repeating patterns, if things are coming up for you that um, have been recurring for quite some time, it's really this time you are so supported to get to the heart of the matter, clear out the roots, uh, clear out the cellar, if you will, so that the new harvest, the new abundance and bounty can come into your experience. So I trust that those messages resonate with you, Taurus. Um, and if you're not sticking along for the Virgo, um, check in the timestamp below for when the, the, for the message from the tree angel oracle. Okay, Virgos, my fellow Virgos, my peeps, 26, 20. All right, let's see what's in store for us. Uh, this quarter. I feel just being a Vir Virgo, personally, I'm feeling it's a very exciting time for us. I feel like many of us have been perhaps on the sidelines, playing the wallflower for a while, hanging out in the shadows as, uh, you know, only a Virgo can do when in um, hermit mode. And I really feel that this quarter is like a coming out, if you will, uh, it, and that there's a there's a cause there's cause for a lot of celebration Virgo so you know I hope you are feeling it in your experience as well let's see the message Mother Earth has for us open up Virgo let me in knock 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 come on all the only oxen free that card wants out okay <laughs> so we've got Ganesh. Um, number 31 and Ganesh is about the ops. The pathway is clear. So it's important for us to know. It's important for you to know this quarter that your path is clear. And if you're feeling that there are all kinds of obstacles like being thrown at you, coming at you, um, just call on Ganesh to remove those obstacles and really remember Virgo that the, most of the obstacles are created in our own minds. And so um, our mind is like a big landmine, this land field, <laughs> and it's really, it can be hard to dodge um, the things that go on in a Virgo's um, head a lot of times. And yet this, this quarter, it's like, I'm feeling this playful energy. Every time I connect with Ganesh, he's like a playful, playful energy, like calling us out to play. And I was just saying, ollie, ollie, oxen free, um, come out, come out wherever you are. And so this is speaking to you, Virgo, come out, allow yourself to be seen, allow yourself to have some fun again, um, really getting back into like, as only a Virgo can do, your zest for life, you are so wise and wonderful um, beyond the um, intellect of the average mind, uh, because you really have this ability to see beyond the veil you really have um, this beautiful ability to see and feel with your heart. And the, the biggest challenge for Virgos is to allow their heart to lead because you are a, um, a way shower. We are the only, um, it's funny because it's 31. And so I see the mirror image of that 13, which is the number of the divine feminine, which is the number of mother earth. And this is really, um, This is really, oh, that's what I wanted to say. Virgo is the only female in the Zodiac, right? So we, uh, Virgos, you know, tend to have this like image of virginal and and um, innocent, maybe innocence comes with virginal. We're anything but that. Virgos are highly um, creative, highly sensual, um, highly sexual beings. Um, sometimes that can be to our detriment, Um you know, especially if we're still working in that um, sexual energy from a wounded space. 
yet a Virgo in her power um, and, and virgin initially before language started to get all like confused and, and uh, Virgo what really meant a woman in her power. It didn't it didn't mean an untouched flower. <laughs> it meant a woman in her power. And so this is what we are when we are, you know, on in our game, if you will, um, truly. And so I do feel that th this is, you know, this is a this is a quarter where Virgo is really coming out of her shell, allowing herself to be seen, whether masculine, whether you're a man or a woman. Um, this is just about the divine feminine essence really coming to the forefront. Um, and it says clearing away obstacles, protection and guidance, which is what I was feeling right from the beginning with that horn beam uh, card, right? That tree angel for all of us. So let's see Archangel Michael. What does Archangel Michael want to say to my Virgo family? If you enjoy these uh, messages, don't forget to leave a comment down below. That card didn't fall out. So don't forget to leave a comment down below. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, please help me grow. I want to grow to a thousand subscribers in this quarter. So with your help, I know I can do it. So thank you. There we go. Whoa, whoa, Mercurus, volatility. So number 23 for me um, in the last few years, 23 and 32 have been um, the divine masculine. So we're just talking about how this divine feminine is growing. And there may be some, as the divine feminine allows herself to come out and be seen, there may be some energy of even the divine masculine energy within you that's all like, whoa, uh, it's a little bit much, lady. Slow your roll, slow down. And, you know, I'm just hearing that this is a cautionary tale um, for all of us during this final quarter. I am honestly feeling, for some, it is an inside volatility that's coming up. And that would just speak to... Um, more deeply healing because you know as we heal we do like anger is one of these emotions that comes up and when it comes up it leads us back to unhealed aspects of ourselves which until now perhaps we weren't able to see or we weren't willing to acknowledge so whatever's coming up for you allow that feminine um, energy to really support you and and, and know that um the blocks are being cleared. There also feels like this is awareness to pay attention. Uh, well, not overly pay attention. Be mindful that there are external forces that don't want to see us divine humans rise, right? They want us resting on our laurels. They want us as the wallflowers hiding inside afraid of life. And now is not the time for that. No, 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 no. Especially for us Virgos. Um, working that Virgo Pisces axis because we are here as the seeds of, um, I want to say new earth, but I'm going to say heaven on earth. We came as the seeds of heaven on earth. And again, as the only feminine, um, as the only female in the zodiac, it's a divine responsibility. And we are being called to step into that responsibility with confidence, with courage, with a zest for life that inspires others to reignite their zest for life. So let's see what card fell here. Ah, the winter card. So take care of your needs. So the winter season for us is coming December 21st. And it feels like, so the autumn, this fourth quarter of 2022, we are, um, we are on fire, we're coming out. We want the world to know, gonna let it show. Some of you will know that. I'm coming out. Um, and this is what the world needs. The world needs us to come out and allow our light to shine, allow ourselves to be seen, allow ourselves to um, be the sacred fool. And then as we move towards the winter solstice, December 21st, there is a call for us to um, come back in a little bit 
and to take care of ourselves, particularly through the holiday season. I love that this card came out because um, for those of you who know me will know that the winter solstice is a really, um, uh, what do I want to say? Uh, um, a life-changing time. It was a life-changing time in my life and still is. It's always been my favorite time. I love the winter solstice and, uh, you know, and then, and then life happens, right? People transition from the physical on really important days. And so this is just highlighting to me that during the holiday season, it's really going to be important for us to um, come back in a little bit, reel it in a little bit, Virgo, and take care of yourself as we move through holiday season and as we move into the winter season. I love that the, the wolf is there on that card and it's kind of like representative of many of us feel alone you know we know that we're not ever alone and yet many of us have um we do feel like the lone wolf you know like we're going it alone and so if that is how you're feeling just know that this is actually um it's a great uh part of what makes you an incredible incredibly powerful being of light, an incredibly powerful um, teacher and healer in this lifetime. So let's see which Keeper of Light is hanging out with us Virgos this quarter. I can't get that song out of my head. I'm going to have to play it after this video, do a little dance party. Maybe you will too. Know that I'm dancing with you if you do Is that Donna Summers that sings that? Oh, Lord Shiva, transcendence, rise up, honor your inner force. Steps are being given, dance with the universe. And I love that in the, the these messages, we got two from, um, what are we, the Hindu mythology, the Hindu religion here guiding us. This is really about, as I was saying, Virgo, this is really about coming out at this time, allowing yourself to be seen allowing yourself to be seen as the powerful force of nature, the powerful for force of the universe that you are. Um, dance with the universe. As I was saying, I'll be having a dance party after this. And this is one of the ways that we are called to support ourselves, Virgo, is through dance, through movement, and, you know, shake it off. As Taylor Swift would say, shake it off and know that you are guided and supported every step of the way. So, whew, I'm excited. I'm coming out. All right, let's see what the horn beam has to say to us for um, to earth signs. This is for all earth signs, okay? Remember this from the beginning? And it says, at the center of every truly sacred place, we are awakened to a new level of consciousness a new way of being. This is where humans can relate to other realms within the multidimensional universe. Sacred places are spiritual gateways. At times, accessing these gateways is an arduous task demanding great concentration and a constant flow of pure energy. Sacred places such as temples are surrounded by protective walls to facilitate this. Stone walls are very effective, but stone is also a dead material that can shut out, shut out the outside world too much. The best protective screen for a sanctuary is a living hedge. In a temp in, and in temperate climates, hawthorn thorn and hornbeams are ideal. Hornbeam protects the sacred grove and is the true keeper of mysteries. It is a mature and measured warrior with many more qualities than its modest manner would suggest. Hornbeam protects our spiritual motives, gives us insight and self-awareness, and imparts a good sense and serene intentions. For the hornbeam to live a simple and modest life is enough like a Zen master living by the maxim. maxim. Before enlightenment, chop wood and carry water. After enlightenment, 
chop wood and carry water. Practical with secure roots, it knows its job to it and it knows its job and finds fulfillment in the task itself. Hornbeam is the silent servant that and serves the silence. Spirit is the master and hornbeam guards the master's chamber. If the angel of hornbeam is repelled from its rightful place, we cannot perceive boundaries with the result that we ignore the needs of others to have their own space. Furthermore, we begin to deny the spot, spiritual aspect of nature. And so the oracle, the message from this oracle is the most holy sanctum, innermost kernel for which you are ready to die, for which you are not quite ready to live. Protect the flame. You are the guardian of the mysteries, the, master, the master's silent servant. So Earth Signs, it's been a delight to be back with you for this quarter. I wish you a blessed final quarter of 2022. I trust that these messages have touched your beautiful heart. And if you would like to work more personally with me, please do visit my website, link in the comments below. I am open and accepting um, bookings for 2023 month by month yearly forecasts. And my website has a myriad of other services I offer. So my fellow earth signs, I see you, I feel you, I love you. Thank you so much for showing up here now. Until next time, take good care.